The original version of the RSS reader was accomplished in 2015. Like today, the application was small and involved nothing more than showing feeds, headlines, and articles. At the time, I had a code module that encompassed SQLite and GNOME XML. We're going to take a look at that module. Uh, the name of it is Gaucher RSS Model, as in the data model for the entire application. This module is just under 1,700 lines of code. That does not sound like much code for a small application until you look at it. At the time, C++ and C++14 was building momentum and was the, all the talk. As a result, I expressed code using several new features of C++. My objective was to use these APIs, but use them according to the best practices recommended by the experts. Here you can see certain um, function prototypes that declare the, the functions used internally by this module. One that I am particularly um, uh, that I particularly like is the DB Connection Guard. DB Connection Guard is a smart pointer. It's a C++ 11 style smart pointer with a custom deleter. This custom deleter, what it does is it takes the um, the type in this case a SQL like pointer or pointer to pointer and it frees it right and so um, I free the SQL light pointer it's actually it's not a pointer pointer it's an actual just pointer and it uh, frees it automatically and so once the function that uses the SQL light object exits the SQL light object is automatically cleaned up And what I wanted to do at the time was improve the way I access raw files. And so I accomplished that with SQLite, but what I want to do now is accomplish that in a smarter, more streamlined, more efficient way. So good interfaces were not the issue indeed good interfaces were part of the design in every iteration of the program and I took steps to ensure that the header file for this module only expressed those functions that should be used by the rest of the application and that worked very well but what I want to do is emphasize in-user logic in a more prominent way. Consequently, this concern reaches the other modules and even the makefile for the program. And this makefile was handcrafted. I handcrafted it and I used the make manual from GNU.org to produce this um, this handcrafted make file and it worked extremely well it's a great make file that I saw as an opportunity for improvement if only the right tools for using make was available so that's what we ended up with with Bakefile is to be able to use Make the way it was intended while eliminating, totally eliminating all the detractors from Make. This is the user interface code that I had at the time and it's very detailed and very granular and I actually like the way it's designed. Yet again, there is a simpler way to do these things. And it was good to do things the way that it was done then, given the maturity level of various API. 
But now that many of the APIs have come along, it's uh, time to change course. And speaking of which, um, this is the most recent completed version of the RSS application. It was defined using WX widgets. This is the command line module. And this command line module runs very well as was demonstrated uh, earlier. This is the opening, the preamble to WX widgets uh, initiation of the application. And as you can see, it's very minimalist. It's defined so that it can produce a main method uh, that is appropriate for either Windows, Mac OS, or Linux. And that's one of the salient aspects of this particular implementation is that I was able to successfully cross compile it for Windows from Linux. And so I was able to build a version for, for Linux and build a version for Windows and the Windows version ran just like the Linux version. So I was pleased with that process. Then I decided that I'm not interested in building applications for Windows at least as far as uh, personal projects. Um, I've done that professionally for many years but uh, for my personal projects the only operating system I'm interested in is uh, Linux and um, as a second choice uh, Apple Mac OS. Um, I see Windows as a valuable operating system for businesses and the enterprise but it's um, for me personally I have moved beyond that in terms of my uh, personal use of computers. These are modules for downloading data uh, over the internet and doing file I.O. and I saw an opportunity with this new version um, that we're discussing to simplify that. Um, this is the XML parsing that occurs in the headlines module. Again, it's quite extensive and again I saw an opportunity to streamline that and simplify it. And so that's the direction from here on out is to take note of the fact that many of these tools we're discussing C++, C, SQLite, XML from GNOME, GTK, CURL, many of them have matured after a few decades of incubation. They have really reached a point where you can use them in a more streamlined manner and the number of workarounds are decreasing by the day. And so with that um, said, the data formats can similarly improve. So I got off of SQLite in 2015 and I switched to a flat file format and it's tab delimited on the left hand side the first column you have the name of the RSS feed and on the right side the web address where that feed exists so when this application or the command line version runs it goes to the RSS feed at the given web address and creates a text file with that same name of the feed and in that text file places the content such as the headline and the web address where that headline can be found and the program parses it and I thought that once a few hundred maybe a few thousand RSS feeds accumulated into these files the program would slow down but it doesn't the C, C++ compilers and APIs, they are optimized to the hilt. And so file I.O. is handled more smartly and more smoothly, which also means that I need to spend too much time on optimization the way that I once did. And I can simplify 
the way the application is expressed and put more emphasis on readability and maintainability to ensure the future success of my effort to expand and evolve the application.